in today's video, we are going to initiate coverage on International Business Machines Corporation, ticker symbol IBM. They trade off the New York Stock Exchange and their current price is $115.40 in after hours. Now real quick guys, before we get started, two things. Number one, make sure you're subscribed to the channel because all of the stocks we cover on this channel, we do stock analysis on, uh, we are always updating any big and upcoming news that comes with our stocks. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And also guys, go down to the description box and check out my social media links. Um, a few days ago, when the big news about uh, IBM acquiring Red Hat hit, I shared that on Facebook and Instagram first. And now I am just getting an opportunity to make a video about it. So a lot of times during the week when big news hits, um, you know, being plugged into my social media, you might get to uh, late breaking news a little quicker than if you just rely on YouTube. So guys, let's talk a little bit about what IBM as a core business does. And guys, this is basically, uh, in a nutshell, this has become a service uh, related company okay so we can take a quick glance at the website but right up here guys the marketplace they have so um, they offer all different types of things in their marketplace like business analytics data management data science they have an automation uh, department they have a blockchain department uh, they offer cloud collaboration solutions internet of things IT infrastructure mobile uh, mobile security talent management and the uh, list goes on you can jump online and take a look at uh, <laughs> their marketplace all the different things that they're involved with so all of these things too guys are very futuristic and uh, you know IBM is kind of a uh, company that's been forgot about a lot in the world of Apple and Microsoft and Google and Amazon you know IBM has been pushed to the side and uh, you know they're actually a very very um, futuristic company that you're probably gonna want in your portfolio moving forward we'll take a look here at some of the services they provide guys so they have a financing they have financing solutions payment options service financing they have certain industry expertise with banking retail telecom media entertainment government and then they offer a training and skills program okay so this uh, like I said this is a very service-based company let's go take a look at some of their products so just right here guys under their products it talks about build the foundation of a smart enterprise with IBM solutions they offer uh, small enterprise servers large enterprise servers scalable servers mainframes so they do still offer a wide array of products they have um, storage products that secure your enterprise with physical and software defined solution, storage solutions for on-premises, cloud, converged, and virtualized environments. And they also, guys, their software. IBM has a very comprehensive uh, software package um, where they, uh, for IBM Z mainframes, software for IBM power system servers, operating systems for IBM Z, and operating systems for power. It's fair to say that uh, IBM is involved in a lot of things that we are gonna see and deal with as we move uh, into the future. So right here, guys, I have the one-year chart pulled up on IBM, and it has been, um, if anything, probably a really good stock to short over the past uh, 12 months, okay? So you see it's dip and beveled and bounced in and out you know like I said right up here till about the first week of October and then it fell off a ledge like pretty much all of the big tech stocks did at that time um but IBM is just a little bit different uh, we'll pull up the five-year chart and as you can see guys IBM is really uh, lost market cap and lost a lot of market space over the past five years okay now this used to be one of Warren Buffett's biggest holdings he was a big holder of IBM for a long time I can't remember exactly when he sold out of his position I know it wasn't very long ago but uh, you know IBM has just not uh, been able to compete with some of the bigger tech companies uh, on the level I think they want to or should be able to okay 
Now I do want to take a minute guys and really dig into these fundamentals because I think you're going to find a few gems in here and I think you're going to find more than one reason why IBM is a good investment. So right here uh, they still have about a $105 billion market cap. Obviously that's probably a little lower than what they should be valuing because the market has shifted down so hard over the past two weeks. But look here, they have a trailing PE of 18.59 and a forward PE of 8.28. So those would suggest that this is a very undervalued company right now. Um, does not mean, now this does not mean if you buy the stock, it's going to run up. Okay, they still have a lot of work to do in the process of recovery. But uh, very good looking company on forward and trailing PE. Now here's the bad news. On a 52 week change, they've lost 25%. Okay. And uh, you know, it's, it's uh, dra dramatically underperformed the S&P 500. Okay. So it's 52 week high is $171 and it's 52 week low was 114.09, which actually took place today. Now, if you want to look here, guys, um, their profit margin 7%, operating margin 15.14%. Those are both positive and good. You're getting about a 6.24 return on your assets, but 28.82% return on equity. So that tells me this company still uh, knows how to invest and uh, make money with their investments and keep the company very valuable, okay? And over here, I, there, I found another thing I really like. There's not a lot of people holding IBM short at this point. Now, these stats, they are accurate as of uh, October 14th. Now, my guess is that a lot of these shorts covered um, when the market dropped off really hard. Because I know I would have. If I would have been shorting a stock when the market dropped off so hard, I would have covered and not got greedy. So there's probably a lot of short sellers out of this position right here. Now this, guys, is where it really gets good. So their forward annual dividend yield is 5.25%. <clears throat> their forward annual dividend rate is $6.28 per share. That's fantastic. That you know, you that is uh, right there. I was uh, IBM was a part of the three stocks I'm going to be buying in uh, November. I'll have a link come up to that video right now. But that's one of the things we talked about is that if you're going to buy this stock and you're going to go in for the long haul, you can go ahead and pencil out a 5.25% tolerance, loss tolerance for this stock because you will get it back in dividends, you know, at the end of the year. We jump over here to the income statement, guys, and this is the part, like I said, that uh, where IBM is not moving in the correct direction at all. So they're minus 2% on quarterly revenue growth. That really bothers me. You know, that really bothers me. Sometimes I'm more inclined to ignore a lot of the other stuff, but if the growth, the revenue growth, and the earnings growth is not there, uh, sometimes I get a little nervous, okay? I get a little nervous because if you're not growing, there's only one other direction you can go, and that means you're dying. Their quarterly earnings growth is uh, at a minus 1% year over year. So, a lot of improvements really need to take place to turn IBM around. Now, here is a good thing to look at too, is their last couple of earnings reports, guys. So if you want to go back to Q4 of 2017, they did have a miss and guidance was dropped uh, a whole lot. But then they've had one, two, three beats in a row and they've had guidance raised one, two, three quarters in a row. So this quarter four um, in 2018, that's they're apparently supposed to report earnings around January 22nd and the guidance bar is raised up pretty high. Um, that is going to be a pretty exciting time for IBM shareholders. Hopefully they can beat and, uh, you know, raise guidance up. Obviously that's what everybody wants on their stocks, but uh, that will be remained to be determined uh, come January. So there is two articles I want to touch on, guys, kind of explaining the um, Red Hat acquisition. But basically, guys, uh, this week was the blue chip technology giant IBM is acquiring hybrid cloud company Red Hat for $34 billion. Now that was a steep 60% premium to the open source software maker's market value. 
but Wall Street largely praised the deal with IBM stock analysts calling the deal as transformative as it gets. The article goes on to read that uh, investors weren't so sure. The deal was announced on Sunday, October 28th. That previous Friday, Big Blue stock closed at 125, and then on Monday it traded down to 115 dollars. Actually, got as low as 114 dollars. That is where I took uh, a small position in my Robinhood account. It was at 114. It got between 114.50 and 115, 114.60. I set my limit order for 114.60 and I got a bundle of shares and this is a starter position. That is how I would suggest playing IBM uh, is that uh, taking a position in your Robinhood account so you're not spending a lot of money, you can load several times and not get beat up with trade commission and I think 114 to 115 is an excellent place to start. Then I'll just briefly mention this too, guys. Why the investor's bearishness? Well, rates are going up, and IBM is presumably taking on a lot of debt to fund this deal. Thus, IBM's balance sheet is going to be loaded up with debt at the exact time you don't want to load your balance sheet up with liabilities. Obviously, um, from an investor's standpoint, there's never really a good time to load your balance sheet up with liabilities. But investors are concerned about earnings and cash flow being pressured and are ultimately worried that the extra debt burden will stop buybacks and or force dividend cut. So that is a real uh, keeper for IBM shareholders is that 5% dividend. That is the reason, one of the big reasons everybody tries to get into this stock. Then, con you know, conversely, there's always the other side of the story. So they claim that won't happen. Instead, the analysts have it right this time. The Red Hat deal is a game changer for IBM and consequently IBM stock. The tech titan needed to take action to boost its cloud business, which has really been the only good thing about this company for the past several years. Recently though, the cloud business has lost some luster as growth rates slipped and I IBM fell behind Amazon, Microsoft, and Google. So, and I also agree with pretty much everything in that paragraph is that cloud has really been carrying IBM over the past few years and now, you know, Amazon, Microsoft, Google have been kind of passing them by. But uh, with the acquisition of Red Hat, I feel like this is a real game changer, but you're probably going to have to wait about a year to really see it reflect in the stock price, okay? So it's going to take some time to get to where we want to be. But, uh, you know, being we are at such all time, all right, five year lows like we are right now, I think it's a really good time to take a starting position. I also wanted to touch on this quick story too, guys. It's just kind of cool. I wanted to share it with you. But the top tech acquisitions of all time, uh, and they have them charted down here at the bottom. So this is pretty cool right here, guys. Um, this is the largest tech acquisitions, excluding the AOL and Time Warner merger. But Dell buys EMC. That was $71.1 billion. JDS Uniface buys SDL. That was $59.9 billion. Avago buys Broadcom for $39.3 billion. And then IBM buys Red Hat for $34 billion. So it was the fifth largest tech acquisition in history. Now, um, you can see there's some other ones down here. H HP buys Compaq. SoftBank buys ARM. Microsoft buys LinkedIn, that was huge. And then Facebook when they bought WhatsApp. And one I don't see on here is when Google uh, bought out YouTube in 2006, but I don't think it was uh, valued anywhere near any of these valuations were. So, you know, just keep in mind, uh, IBM buying out Red Hat, it's a very expensive deal, and they are going to be taking on <laughs> a lot more debt because of it. So we're over here on tip ranks guys. Let's just kind of take a look and see how they view IBM. So they got the average analyst consensus on IBM is a moderate buy. You have five calling it a buy, seven calling it a hold, and one calling it a sell. And their uh, high price target on IBM is $200. Average price targets $163.64. And even their low price target of $140 is still $25 than the current price they have on it right now. So a lot of that, again, has to do with market conditions. Then we'll come on down here to the bottom, guys, and look at uh, some of the analyst ratings. So you got KeyBank has it as a hold, 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 
<laughs> you see, most of these analysts are calling uh, IBM a hold. Very few of them are calling them a buy. However, they have not factored in the Red Hat deal yet because most of these span at least two to three weeks ago. There was one that was two days ago. So KeyBank come out and reiterated its hold rating on IBM despite the Red Hat acquisition. But oddly enough, even all these price targets at a hold, buy, or sell are uh, dramatically higher than its current price. So that's that's where I really see the play working out, guys, is getting in here around the $115 level. And like I said, buying in at a one-year low, I think there's some real value between growth prospects and dividend. So you're going to get value and growth, in my opinion, in IBM if you ride it out and try to hold for the long run. So like I mentioned uh, halfway through the video guys, I've already taken a small position in Robinhood and yes, I am calling uh, IBM a buy, okay? I'm calling them a buy, but a speculative buy, okay? I don't want you, you know, mortgaging the house and you know, selling the cars and <laughs> selling everything you got and jumping in IBM. This should be a slow and methodical approach uh, investment you know um, we are here at a very nice level at 115 like I said the best way to play it zero commission trading do a Robin Hood or Webull you know grab five or ten shares and then uh, observe the price movement if it drifts down to 105 or 100 then pick up some more but I think this is going to bounce out of the 115 range and like I said I think in a year maybe a little longer the Red Hat acquisition is really going to work out, benefit IBM, and make them a lot more profitable. Thanks for watching the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Go on down to the comment section. Tell me what you think about IBM. Specifically, tell me what you think about the IBM Red Hat deal. I think it's pretty exciting. Drop a like on the video for me. And as always, thank you for watching and have a great day.